Welcome and thank you for watching this talk. We'd also like to thank the organizers of the ICLDC conference this year. In addition to the well-established ethical argument that community involvement and in language documentation should be done, the literature on language documentation and description promotes the notion that active community involvement also results in a better documentary record. What exactly makes a documentary record good though? And how exactly does community involvement contribute to the record? Do all communities or individuals make the same types of contributions? To begin to answer these questions, we will assess documentary records produced with varying levels of involvement from four different speaker communities of Northern Tanzania over the last decade. The two primary researchers of these documentation projects are myself, pictured here on the left, and my colleague Andrew Harvey, pictured on the right. My name is Richard Griscom, and I am a postdoctoral researcher at Lyon University who specializes in the documentation of endangered languages in East Africa and the development of digital fieldwork methods. I've worked with the Asamdig de Toga and Hadza communities, both of Northern Tanzania. And my name is uh, Andrew Harvey. I'm also a postdoctoral uh, research fellow at Leiden University, and uh, I'm interested in the languages of the Tanzanian Rift, their documentation and description, their formal morphosyntax, and the histories and cultures of their speaker communities, especially as evinced through linguistic arts and language contact. And I have uh, worked uh, with uh, the uh, Gorwa speech community, uh, the Ihanzu speech community, and uh, more recently the Hadza speech community in uh, documenting and helping to document uh, their languages. Um, and indeed, the Tanzanian Rift Valley area is a particularly rich area for this kind of work. According to Kiesling, Mouse, and Nurse, 2008, it's the only place on the African continent in which languages from all four major African language phyla are spoken and have been in contact for a long period of time. This is reflected in the languages of our sample. The first language of our sample is Asamjig de Toga, which is actually just one variety of de Toga, which is a group of languages or dialects spoken in various areas across Tanzania. The three areas where Asamjig de Toga are spoken near Lake Eyasi are indicated here by red circles. And there's a fourth community much further to the north. Asamjig de Toga is a Southern Nilotic language and is spoken by approximately 3,000 people. Here's a short sample of the Asamjig de Toga language. <laughs> Gorwa is a South Cushitic language of the Afroasiatic phylum spoken by around 130,000 people in and around Babati. And here's a short uh, video of Akobu Sakware talking about farming Saizul when he was younger. Hadza is the third language in our sample, and it is a language isolate spoken by approximately 1,000 people in the area surrounding Lake Ayasi. Here's a sample of Hadza. The fourth and final language of our sample is Ihanzu, and Ihanzu is a Bantu language of the Niger Congo phylum, spoken by around 26,000 people in and around the northern Singida district. And here is a video of uh, Samuel Isia. Uh, speaking with a friend about uh, Ihanzu riddles. Oh, Peddy Hans, he be the young Halanga in the Rautire, Nagokira woman so Emetuka Longalago Wanyomba Wanyomba Hundi. So very briefly, we'd like to provide a rough timeline of the projects uh, whose data we'll be using in this talk. So my work with Gorwa began in late 2012 and uh, continued essentially as a lone wolf style project until early 2018. During this time, around 208 hours of recordings were made. 
Uh, Richard's initial work with Azam Jaig de Toga began in 2015 and continued in that form for about three years, during which around 140 hours of recordings were made. As part of a Firebird grant, I could begin more actively involving local Gorwa researchers in early 2018 in a project that continues in one way or another to present. And uh, during this particular project, around 281 hours of recordings were made. Richard also began expanding his project with Azamjeg de Toga thanks to Firebird funding at around this time and ran that project for around th uh, nine months, collecting around 22 hours of recordings. Our ELDP funded projects with Hadza and Ihanzu began in late 2019 and continue to present. And uh, up uh, from the beginning of the, this project to uh, around September of last year, uh, our Hadza project has managed to collect around 75 hours of recordings and our Ihanzu project has uh, managed to collect around 107 hours of recordings. Returning now to the central issue of our talk, the literature on language documentation and description commonly underscores the importance of fostering close relationships with speech communities and promotes the notion that active community involvement makes for better documentations. The problem is that it is never particularly rigorously defined what exactly a better documentation is. Here, this word cloud was constructed from a sample of eight articles written about language documentations, extracting terms the authors seem to emphasize for their uh, better documentations. As we can see, the terms are many. Furthermore, no attempts have been made to compare community-led documentations versus outsider-led documentations. Um, so using the data from our own language documentation projects, this is what Richard and I would like to undertake. Um, so first of all, we can isolate a, uh, a first uh, criterion here for better uh, documentations, and that is uh, comprehensiveness. And uh, we can see that it is composed of the following sort of sub facets and uh, takes in uh, some of the terms here in this word cloud uh, as they are highlighted. And this is the main criterion that we're going to examine in this uh, talk today. Uh, next, we, we have derived a further criterion, that of naturalness, represented by terms such as rich and natural in the literature. And this is clearly an important constellation um, uh, of, of characterizations, uh, but here suffice it to say that this term has several problems and examination uh, will actually be deferred uh, for a future talk. Um, a third criterion, that of emic meaningfulness, how meaningful the documentation is to the community members was also identified. But again, this must be left for a future talk by Richard and I. Today, we're going to focus simply on comprehensiveness and we'll briefly address each of the subcategories that you see here. Throughout the remainder of the presentation, we'll use the terms insider researcher and outsider researcher to denote researchers who are members of the community and those who are not. We'll use the unqualified term researcher to refer to both of these groups. These terms are taken from a 2006 publication by Felix and Macon. We've observed that some of these components of comprehensiveness can be related to different aspects of insider researchers contributing to the documentation. The first two, quantity and geographical coverage, largely stem out of the fact that teams of researchers are collecting data rather than an individual researcher. We will see that speaker diversity can be linked to different identity categories of researchers, regardless of whether or not they are insider or outsider researchers. Finally, we will see that the involvement specifically of insider researchers contributes to the interactivity, topics, and speech genres. In terms of quantity, let's start by looking at the quantity of recording hours produced during the documentation process. In this graph, we see that in our data sample, the total number of recordings produced by insider researchers who are working in teams is often, but not always, higher than the number of hours of recordings produced by individual outsider researchers. This potential for greater quantity represents a reoccurring pattern that working with community members offers opportunities to increase the comprehensiveness of the record, but it does not by default result in the same kind of comprehensiveness. 
One fact which isn't represented here is that outsider researchers often collect elicited data, and this type of data is often much longer in duration than the natural speech data collected by insider researchers, and often constitutes a significant portion of the hours of recordings created by outsider researchers. Another way in which community members contribute to the comprehensiveness of the record is by increasing the potential to work with larger numbers of speakers. Here we see that in our data sample, the average number of unique speakers participating in the documentation projects led by insider researchers is often much higher than those led by outsider researchers. Again, this reflects a potential that is not always realized, and there's a lot of variation across the different groups. Another component of comprehensiveness is the geographical coverage. This can vary significantly depending on the geographical distribution of speakers. Here, for example, we see the distribution of recordings that I produced during my time as a graduate student, which reflects the dispersed nature of the Awesome Drake to Togo community. I was primarily based in the Kangarari, which at the time was the only known community of Awesome Jake to Togo speakers. I later collected data during short trips to the other three communities, but the resulting documentation reflects the fact that I was working alone as a researcher based in a single community. When working with insider researchers, we find that there's much potential for greater geographical coverage. Here on the left, for example, we see the geographical distribution of recordings produced by Hansa insider researchers. And on the right, we see the distribution of total recordings by location. There's still some areas which are better represented than others, and those are the locations where the Hadza insider researchers reside. One of the possible underlying reasons as to why insider researchers contribute so significantly to the geographical coverage of the documentation is that their knowledge of and familiarity with the place will be much more extensive than that of an outsider researcher. So here we have Hadza insider researchers Nange and Angela traveling from Domanga village to Sengele camp, where they are not only familiar with the route, a rather nondescript track through a vast expanse of gallery forest, but they're also deeply embedded through kinship and through friendship in the community they are recording in. So what is a remote bush camp to the outsider is a visit with friends and family to the insider. The diversity of speakers across different categories of identity and experience is also an important part of the comprehensiveness of the record. Here we consider the distribution of speakers by gender based on the gender of the researcher creating the recording. In our data sample, female insider researchers work more frequently with female speakers, whereas male insider researchers and outsider researchers work more frequently with male speakers. This indicates that in addition to a researcher's status as a community insider or outsider, other aspects of their identity or background may influence the type of record that they produce. Also, if we want to produce a balanced documentary record, then it's most likely necessary to include female insider researchers in the data collection process. There's not evidence of such a clear connection between the age of researchers and the age of speakers that they work with. There's a general tendency across all the projects in our data for researchers to work with older speakers. This is most likely because elders are viewed as possessing endangered knowledge and perspectives which should be prioritized during the documentation process. This trend is represented here by the Gorwa insider researchers and the outsider researchers. The Hadza insider researchers were the only group to work with a larger number of younger speakers. And the youngest Hadza researcher who is in her 20s did work with twice as many speakers in the 20 to 29 year old category as all of the other categories combined. Further facet of diversity has to do with something a bit less easily quantifiable. So this image, a composite of a 2009 National Geographic article on the Hadzabe people, presents a series of portraits illustrative of how the journalist viewed the Hadzabe people at the time, a rather homogeneous, culturally conservative and insular community and contrast that with the photos of some project participants taken by the insider researchers, a much more diverse group, including both traditionalist as well as Hadzabe people living their lives in ways perhaps less appealing to a magazine photographer or editor. Representation, we believe, is not trivial and emic representation affects the documentary record 
in a positive way. Further element of comprehensiveness is interactivity or the extensiveness of engagement between interlocutors. We argue that interactivity in recordings is also improved by involving insider researchers. So here we have a video I made interviewing uh, Manango Kamsilo, a well-known Gorwa stone diviner. In the interview, I was asking questions in Swahili at, and at the time I was getting answers in Gorwa, which I could not yet understand. So that did affect how I interacted uh, with this uh, local expert. Um, compare that to Pascal Bou's interview with uh, stone diviner Ibrahim Lawe, where uh, the back and forth is much more extensive and Pascal's questions and interaction follows the flow of the conversation. So you will actually see two uh, significantly different kinds of recordings um, based on the interview, uh, the insider uh, interaction versus the outsider uh, researcher interaction. A further element of comprehensiveness is the range of topics recorded. That is what the speakers decide to speak about. And in this video, Humay Basoro talks about preparing leafy greens to cook. This might seem mundane, but was a particularly valuable contribution from our woman researcher, Christina Gwai, who, uh, and it would have been largely inaccessible to our male researchers because of how gendered a space the kitchen is uh, in the Gorwa language community. Uh, similarly, the topic of the Gorwa Manda Brotherhood would have also been very difficult to record, except that Pascal Bou has privileged access to these men because of the social connections of his father. And other topics may be accessible to the outside researcher, but just are not valued enough to be pursued uh, by the outsider researcher. So here we have Ihanzu insider researcher Sara Kalayel speaking with Betha Isia on how the Ihanzu people raise children. I personally would never have thought to pursue this topic, but it is one that occurs again and again in the insider researchers' interests across all of our different projects. And finally, there are topics which insider researchers will pursue, which are just entirely unknown to an outsider. So here, Hadza insider researcher Jacobo Lubumba enters a baobab tree in Gadigadi to search for honey. Similarly, we argue that insider researchers may also contribute to a richer array of speech genres. With the exception of elicitation, insider researchers have recorded material from all of the genres listed here and more. Um, perhaps most exciting is the possibility of insider researchers to uncover emic speech genres, unknown or perhaps unknowable to the outsider researcher. This recording is by Festo Masani of a Gorwa pre-wedding ceremony in which the betrothed woman exits her house and attempts to take the shoes off of her fiance who's expected to ritually resist. While no speech occurs between these two, the crowd of onlookers is expected and encouraged to berate the bride-to-be, egging the man to put up a fight and find a partner with more vim and vigor. This kind of sanctioned public insult is virtually non-existent in any other context. And what we see here is really pragmatically different enough to be considered its own genre. Finally, we would like to explore how the documentary record that researchers produce reflects both their individuality and their unique relationships with members of the community. We'll do this by sharing a set of visualizations of the social networks of our sample. These images can help us to understand what sort of relationships are represented in each documentary record. In these visualizations, each participant is represented by a node, and the darkness of the node indicates the number of documented interactions with other speakers that they have had. A line between nodes indicates at least one interaction has been documented, and the width of the line indicates the number of interactions. This is a visualization of the social network from my own project working as a solo researcher with the SMJ Katoga. You can see here that this network radiates out from one single individual with a few interactions between others. There are also a small number of participants who have had many interactions with the researcher and many participants who have had few interactions with the researcher. In this visualization of Andrew Harvey's documentation with the Gorwa, you can see a somewhat similar pattern but with more interactions between other participants. 
This indicates that he worked with more small groups of participants documenting their relationships. In this visualization of the Ihanzu documentary record, we see that the two Ihanzu insider researchers worked with a small network of participants, and they often work with the same set of participants. But the two researchers did not necessarily work together. In this visualization of the Asamju de Toga record produced by the insider researchers, we see that the researchers did often work with each other. This is represented by the wide lines connecting the researcher nodes. We suspect that this type of collaboration may actually be common among the other researcher groups, but it was not coded in the metadata for those groups, so it's only represented in the visualization for this group. In this visualization of the Gorwa Insider Researcher Network, we start to see some clear differentiation between the networks of participants working with each researcher. The top two researchers occasionally worked with the same speakers as did the two researchers on the left side of the screen. You can also see some differences in terms of the size of the networks, as the researcher on the bottom right opted for working more intensely with a couple of individuals, while the other researchers opted for working with a wider range of individuals. Finally, in this visualization of the Hadza Insider Researcher record, you see the clear effects of geographical distribution. The two pairs of researchers at the bottom of the screen are located in two villages which are quite close to each other, and thus they occasionally work with the same speakers. We also see a lot of overlap within the pairs, which again reflects the idea that the researchers are cooperating together and working with the same speakers. The other researchers at the top of the screen are located far away and thus work primarily with distinct groups of people. We also see some participants emerge as common collaborators across the different teams, perhaps representing significant social figures within the community. There's a participant node in the center left of the screen, for example, which is connected to four of the seven researcher nodes. What do these visualizations tell us? Well, clearly each researcher produces a documentary record by navigating their own social network by working with the people that they know. Also, capturing the speech of an individual speaker only once through an interaction with a single researcher from a single perspective, it may not reveal the full spectrum of variation in that participant's speech. There's potential to better document the relationships between community members by increasing the number and the diversity of researchers. So in summary, we found that teams of researchers have the potential to produce more comprehensive records than individual researchers, and that diversity within those teams also contributes to the comprehensiveness of the record. And finally, that through relationships with community members and through their specialized knowledge, insider researchers have the unique potential to produce comprehensive documentary records in ways that outsider researchers simply cannot. Here are our references, and we want to thank you again for watching our talk.